Okay, welcome back. Um, we're going to be, so we, we had focused on uh, skills of uh, personalizing, and now we're going to be looking at how we can uh, influence and how we can initiate action. Okay, how could you come to a place of bringing the counselees to move into the next uh, part of their um, of their journey in in counseling? Okay, so they've you've got them to a place of um, personalizing that you know this is this is the kind the problem or the or the or, or this is a goal that they have, you've come there. Now, before we get into initiating, um, I, I just would like to also share of how can we can we get to influence? What, what do we do to help them to uh, influencing them into initiating that action? OK, um, just a minute, I'm just going to. OK, so we're looking at influencing skills that helps them to move forward into getting them to move into action. Now, um, when we look at the word influencing, the word influence is to mean to flow in. It is the act uh, of producing an effect uh, without putting too much of force or a direct sense of command. So it is a skill where the counselor is taking a step towards moving them into change. You're influencing them in such a way that uh, they, are, they are choosing to move from that place of personalizing to a place of actually initiating that form of action. Okay? There are different kinds of influencing skills, but uh, some of the skills that you will see takes a direct approach and some would probably be an indirect approach. And then we're going to be looking at some of those approaches. So they, uh, the, the outcome is always the change, the change of the counselee in their certain situation, where they are looking at some alternatives which they can act upon, which will help them to bring about a faster or a quicker change. And these changes is what we hope will be more permanent. All right, so it can be both a direct as well as an indirect approach, but a lot more times it's more direct. And the outcome is always to bring about change where you're helping them to look at some alternatives on how they can respond, how they can act so that the change can be better, it can be quicker. OK, so um, uh, when you are influencing, the, the very specific purpose uh, is to facilitate that change is to facilitate the way the counselee chooses to think or it chooses or they choose to act. It's adding a different perspective and a hope. So think of, um, um, you know, let's suppose you're teaching a child a certain, let's say you're teaching a child math, and you're teaching a certain method or a technique. And if that method and technique doesn't help, you have to bring about another technique or uh, or, a, or a method that will influence change in the way that they see or in the way that they understand in the way that they act so that's that's basically what it means you're influencing a way so that they could help to think a different way from how your counselee has always thought they may have thought a certain way that this is the only way to deal with this problem or to deal with this kind of a concern what you're doing in influencing is you're helping them to think a different way, helping to give a fresh perspective or a fresh hope towards the situation. Now, when is this used? It's used when the counselee is exploring different options on how they can think or behave in their specific situation. So it is used at the fag end of the of your sessions where you're moving them into a place of action, where you're pushing where you're gently nudging them into think of different ways of behaving or thinking as against how they have thought or behaved 
prior to that. OK, we're going to be looking at some influencing skills. And I will explain what they mean, mean, and then I will bring about a certain example. OK, um, now often we find that counselees uh, give stories to us. So they may be saying things that often have contradictions. There are contradictions between their thought and their feeling. There are contradictions between their feeling and their behavior. There are many combinations like that. OK, uh, and what happens when? you know when you they they could complicate things a lot further when they may have feelings that are ambiguous that is they can feel two opposite feelings simultaneously for a certain situation they're feeling happy yet they are feeling torn about uh, torn about this and usually sometimes counselors are really not aware that they are doing this so in order to help counselors address this distress it sometimes is essential that these inconsistencies are brought to their attention and address. Otherwise, what can happen is it can get them stuck to that, to their problem. How do we do that? Now, it's uh, it, it's very easy sometimes to make a person very def defensive. And we, as a counselor, uh, we you need to remember that we are in a position uh, uh, and so, so what happens is we we can bring about certain ways of questioning the position that they are they are holding. Okay, so we've got to carefully confront counselees because they should not feel. And and when you look at the word confrontation, it's all it almost looks like a like a negative connotation. But a good confrontation can be gentle. It can be supportive. It can even reflect what uh, accurately reflect what your counselee has shared with you. So the idea is to help the counselee really explore uh, maybe their own conflict much more deeply, with the goal of coming to a new idea that will benefit benefit them. So the so the counselor, uh, when you're expressing it, you're actually expressing genuine confusion to what the client has said so that you not you not only can understand but you're also helping them to move forward so what you're helping them do is to face themselves real realistically especially you know as they're interacting with you so it is this is a direct technique with an open and an honest identification of some mechanisms that they may be used and uh, that they are using and this will help them to integrate some part of themselves which may be in conflict so basically what you you're noticing as a counselor you're noticing that maybe their feeling and the way that they behave to it to it are not uh, are not in tandem they're not the same and so you're confronting that and saying you know this is what i noticed you saying but nevertheless this is what i've noticed you doing or would you like to share with me what has been the discrepancy so you're doing it in a very non-judgmental way. But I could also say this, OK, you're saying one thing and you're doing one thing. What are you doing? You know, you only seem very confused about yourself. So that could seem to seem to come up quite negatively. Um, uh, it, it can be as if there's a negative judgment to this. Let me give you an example that will help you to understand. OK, so the counselee is saying, uh, I just don't have time to exercise, and I don't have the money to join a gym anyway. But I really want to lose weight and feel better. So this is what the counselee uh, has said. The wrong way of a counselor to say is, is you're just making excuses then. You know what's good for you, and you refuse to do it. So the counselor has got got the... Uh, discrepancy quite accurately, but it has not been properly worded. But instead, if the right way of saying it is, on one hand, you know exercise is good for you, but yet on the other hand, you don't want to do it. Could you explain this to me? Right. So you're helping the counselee come back to really judge and see for themselves that discrepancy for themselves okay because the more that they're able to explain or discover that there is intellectually i feel something 
but when it comes down to that i don't want to do it right so what what is it that is that stands as an impediment into taking that action so you're actually influencing their thoughts and their ideas of thinking okay so confrontation is one one of the uh, uh, examples or one of the ways that you can really influence your counsellee. The second one is called focusing. Now, what is what does focusing do? Focusing actually brings about um, uh, is is a place where the counsellor uh, 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 a counsellor directs the counsellee's conversational flow into certain areas. You're focusing from one area into another area, right? So uh, maybe in, in the way that you have noticed or when you've spoken to them, there are some places that they're talking about, and but you would want them to generate uh, a, a better idea looking at a certain different part of their lives. Like, for example, um, maybe you have noticed uh, um, that that your counselee is talking uh, talking very little about his family. So the or or maybe they they've spoken a lot about one area of their life. So let's say maybe the way that they deal with their family and how good his relationships are in his family. But when he's talking to you about work and he's saying of how difficult the relationships have been at work. Now, what you want to do is you want to focus on that which is working and maybe saying, OK, would you like to share with me how your how you have been able to manage successfully your relationships at your home? So he may say, yeah, you know, I'm very kind or I'm I'm very um, I'm very caring about them. I'm uh, I, I put their needs in front of mine, something. So he may he may he may give you a certain understanding now. What you're doing is you've, you've moved from this problem area of the work and you've focused on another area, taken all his competencies, all his strengths, and saying, OK, if you're telling me that you know these are some of the skills that you use when you're working with your family members. Now, if you were to use the same skill here at your workplace with your colleagues, what would be different? So you see, you know what focusing did? You've help them generate a story on one area of their lives and saying, OK, what worked for me in that place? And what can I do to take from that area of my life into this to see if it works? So that's and, and you're influencing them to saying, OK, I've done it before with my family. I have ABCD skills to deal with people in my family. And what if so the counselor is influencing and saying, what if you focus on some of those things that you did with your family and use it here? How would that generate a different story? Right. So that's what a focusing could could mean. Or if there is some area that you feel now that this is one example. Another way of focusing is if you see that there is some area that truly contributes to your understanding of the problem, that's when you can say, you know, I've noticed that you've spoken about this. Would you like to share a little bit with me about this area of your life, right? So that will, again, help you focus on moving away from something that you're, which may be a problem, or which may not be a problem. You're helping to direct the focus onto something else. Let's look at an example, uh, and then I think it, it should help. OK, so the client, the counselor is saying, I am wondering how I will manage my finance, many bills to be paid, kids' tuition fees, house maintenance, and much more. So the counselor says, you're worried about the many responsibilities you have financially. So the counselor says, yes, absolutely. So the counselor is now redirecting, refocusing. Often the amount and the way we spend our money can give us a good idea on how we can manage our finances. What are generally the other things you like to spend on? So what are you, what is the counselor doing here? Is that not just looking at the problem places where he's unable to manage his finances. Direct, he's exploring, the counselor is exploring, if there are other areas of life that the counselee spends on, which makes it difficult for them to 
uh, pay up these tuition or uh, these kids' fees or the other bills or the maintenance. So again, there is a refocusing. There is a change that is taking place from that to this. Okay. So that's that's again what is uh, what is uh, focusing. That's again another skill that the uh, another influencing skill. The third one. Are you all with me? I hope we're all okay. Okay, all right. So the next one is what we look at interpretation or reframing. Now interpretation or reframing again is yet another influencing skill. Here, uh, the counselee is encouraged to perceive their experience in a more positive fashion. Okay, so the counselor, what the counselor does is encourages this change or this shift by uh, maybe uh, suggesting alternative ways of viewing their experience. So, for example, let's say a client who's upset about having to move away from home uh, is likely to be focusing on the, the fact that, you know, they don't have a good support network or that they're not familiar with the community. So the counselor, while acknowledging that the, the, you know, the, the, the loss for the uh, counselee is great, can reframe the event to be seen as an opportunity to experience new things, maybe new places, new people, new growth. So what you're doing is it's, uh, it's, it, it's a way that you're encouraging the counselee to view a life situation from an alternate frame of reference. So you're giving them a new, uh, what do you say, a new glasses. Now, this strategy does not change that the situation, the facts of the situation, or it doesn't make small whatever pain the person is going through, but you're actually helping them to think of bringing them to another frame of reference. So the objective here is to help them build a better positive perspective towards the problem so that they can take an effective action, OK? So it involves using a different frame of reference for a problem. Uh, we look at the same example, and this is this is the same example I told you about. Uh, let's say the counselee says, moving away from home has made me miserable. I miss my family. I miss my friends and everything that was so familiar. So the counselor here is not uh, uh, um, trivializing the pain. Uh, she says, you feel unhappy that you have left behind all your loved ones and everything that was familiar through this move. What good do you see through this although? So you say, so she didn't say it, but she's brought about, despite all of this, what are some of the good things that you see? So the counselee says, I don't know, everything is so new. But you, but you know, you could always say, what do you think? And she or the counselor can say, you know, sometimes being in a new situation can be quite stressful. However, it may be an opportunity to experience new people and places too. What do you think? Right? So there is a different, you're reframing the same situation to be looked at from a different lens. So, you know, from taking this conversation, she may say, yes, there are new people, new places. So, I, so she said, yes, I agree with that. So then you can say, how do you think you can explore those new people and new places? Then she may come up with an idea. Maybe I should just go to my neighbor and uh, probably introduce myself. Or maybe I should just uh, go around, explore the place every morning for 10 minutes. So, you know, you've got them to think to initiate that action. So you may sometimes need them, need to influence, be that small nudge to help them to focus on something that is, uh, that, that's something that they can do, OK? Uh, the next one is logical consequences. Logical, logical consequences. Now, um, in this, what are you enabling your counselee to do is to really see what could be outcomes of an alternative action. So you're looking at positive possibilities and concentrating on those outcomes. So sometimes counselees have unrealistic exp uh, expectations about the consequence of, of a certain goal, right? And they are, uh, and, and, and because of that, they can be quite non-compliant. They may not comply with you. So counselors need to help uh, the counselee 
to expect uh, both, you know, both positive also, uh, and, and keep them really focused on looking at what could be positive possibilities that come about. So you are actually helping them to logically come to a sense of understanding of that situation. Um, so we'll just look at an example. OK, so uh, the example here is a person who's had depression. So the counsel, counselor asked, what are your expectations regarding the medication that is given to you for depression? So the counselor says, I guess with the medication, I should feel better in a few days and have them taken off. So the counselor is giving a little bit of information here, saying, actually, the first few weeks, you may really not experience much change. It may take a month or more to see the real effects of the medicine. So the counsel, uh, the uh, counselor says, oh, that's disappointing. Then here is where your counselor is saying, you really wished it would work quick. However, it would be necessary to keep a constant follow up with the doctor. So you're giving certain consequence to the certain ideas that they may have so that they may, they may stay realistic in their expectation. OK? So you're moving them into a right place of action. Sometimes it may be necessary that you may need to educate your counselees on certain things, right, which they may not be aware of. Or even if you are not aware of, one thing you can do is, you know, maybe that's something you and I can check. Suppose you didn't know that, uh, you know, the uh, that the medicines for depression don't work in the initial few weeks. You can say, actually, I'm not too sure about how that could take effect. Maybe it's a good thing to talk to so-and-so person to understand the real effects of the medicine. So it's OK if you're not, um, if, if you don't have an awareness, if you don't have an understanding of something, all that you need to do is if, if you do find certain things that could have some consequences, always going back to help them, influencing them to really research or to understand something better before they can decide on taking an action. OK? Um, OK, the next one is what we call a self-disclosure. Now, self-disclosure is, uh, is what helps or what the counselee does to intentionally disclose some information of themselves, but which is, uh, it, it, should be, it should be relevant to whatever the counselee is talking about. Okay, it should not. It should be either relevant or it should be supportive of. You, it cannot be general, open details. So it involves the counselor disclosing personal information which could be relevant or supportive to the decision that the counselee has to make. Now this is used generally as something to motivate them to concentrate on the positive aspect of a certain situation. So this, it, it helps uh, strongly because it helps to build that sense of trust and a rapport uh, in the relationship. But we've got to be careful that, um, you know, it should not be used inappropriately, that counselors should not be sharing too much of their stories. It shouldn't be taken, uh, done inappropriately so much so that the counselee is, in fact, listening to you, then you listening to the counselor. Uh, I mean, uh, then the counselor listening to the counselee. So if you need to use self-disclosure, you've got to be intentional. You've got to be simple, just to the point uh, situations or stories. Stay parallel, which is it should be relevant. It should be appropriate to what the counselee is sharing. You shouldn't lie. Time it correctly. You know, sometimes when the counselee is really crying and uh, feeling very bad about something, you can't say, oh, the same thing also happened to me, you know. And that becomes like, it becomes like you're the center of the counseling room. Right? And don't overburden your counselees and disclose too frequently. One or two here and there is fine. But it is, it's a helpful technique to help them to rethink or think of a different situation. Um, look at, let's look at an example. 
um, the counselor is saying, I know how hard it is to be consistent about disciplining children. I struggled with correcting the behavior of my children too for a while a few years ago. Often it just feels like it's more work and effort, but at the end I have seen that it has paid off being consistent. So here she's just encouraging the counselee to be consistent even with the changes that may not really happen. So the counselee is saying, oh, I can't imagine you having problems managing your kids. Um, and uh, the counselor is saying, I'll take that as a compliment, but it's been a learning experience for me too. So it really helps to see sometimes when the counselor is disclosing on how uh, the counselor also works through some of these situations. Okay, the last one is feedback. Feedback is what um, helps uh, in giving information. It involves giving concise information to the counselee about what is an improvement, or it's a feedback about how uh, how they have been. So it's uh, it it is given back to your counselee and it isn't about um, the content of the information but about their behavior so it describes how they act and appear to others when they are sharing their story so it's a powerful technique because clients uh, counselees hear things about themselves and uh, the way that they appear to others that they may have never considered uh, or that they may be new to them okay so it should basically concentrate on the positive aspects of the person's behavior and how he can explore some possibilities in order to achieve that kind of an improvement. So it, it really helps for the counselee to hear um, uh, certain, certain examples or certain ways on how it, things can be worked, uh, worked out. So the example here. The counselor is saying, I'm wondering if you have noticed that each time we have discussed the children, your eyes have filled up. Would you explain to me what you're going through? So here, there's something, there's a feedback. Whenever you've spoken about your children, your eyes have filled up. It's an observation and there's a feedback given. So she's saying, over the past few years, you seem to, or, or another way to say it is, over the past few years, you seem to have made efforts to stick on to the schedule you have prepared. The progress you are seeing could be related to that. So it, it, different examples of how a counselor is really giving a proper feedback in order to influence and initiate, continue the change that may have, uh, that the counselee may have gone through. Uh, there's, sorry, there's one more. Yeah, there's one more. Um, the next, the last one is providing information and suggestions. Now, information involves giving the counselee some information that can assist them in some way. Um, sometimes it's important uh, to help with that. Okay, so it doesn't. Um, uh, I, I know very often we talk about don't give suggestions, but there may be certain information that is important to give it, which should be relevant to their needs it should be they should be receptive to that information and be very concise and concrete about the information that you are giving okay an example is uh, the client is saying i have been wanting to know all the investment plans available in a bank but i'm afraid because i don't understand some of those terms so the counselor says yes all those jargons are unfamiliar maybe a good person to approach is to is a bank manager. So some, some um, you know, direction and some feedback can help the counselee to really uh, pick up some of those, so some of these simple, simple kind of details. Okay. Now these influencing skills are generally used in degrees uh, that that depend on the counselor's approach and the personal framework so it depends on how you are using it you can use you there are many people who use it highly and some people who don't use it. anyway it's a it's a skill that can be used okay i have a few examples for you to write a response okay so um let's look at uh, this is a time for you all to you all to work on okay Let's look at using some influencing skills, all right? 
the first the client is saying i know i generally feel better after the medical procedure but visiting a doctor is so frightening those needles the smells and the entire environment can be very daunting so can you use any of these influences influencing skills interpretation or reframing or logical consequences so i'd like you all to put some answers what can how can you use any of this Okay, you could put your put your uh, uh, answer in the chat. Okay, either using a logical consequence or interpretation reframing. So she's saying, "I feel better when I go to the doctor, but it is so frightening. Those needles, the smell, and the entire environment is very daunting." So, what influencing skill can you use? You can put your uh, responses on the chat. Do you all want to see what uh, interpretation and reframing is? I will quickly move back there. Logical consequences is this. OK? There are. Positive outcomes, okay? How can you look at positive outcomes? And uh, interpretation is you're looking at a different perspective, a different frame of reference towards a problem. Okay. Yeah. Anyone? Quickly, quickly. Let's let's try and finish quickly. What could you say to this person? OK, you need to try. Only if you try will we know that we are in the right direction or not. Nobody? Oh, okay, Jack in. Okay, it seems that the thought of visiting a hospital is quite frightening, but then a good doctor can help you with your issue. Very good. That's that's excellent. That's good, good, Jack in. So you've done interpretation and reframing. Can someone do logical consequences? Can someone try logical consequences? OK, let me help with that so that you, you have a flow. So I'd, I'd say something like, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I do see that it can be very daunting to, to be in an environment uh, which, which smells and which, which, uh, uh, which feels very, uh, very difficult. It, it, can, it can be very, very unsettling. Um, but I was wondering, you know, once you've had uh, that treatment, you did mention that you feel better. Could you describe that to me? How does how does it help you uh, feel better? So there is a you you're moving them away from the place of what is difficult into what may help, right? So then she may say, yeah, I after that I'm uh, you know I'm I'm much better health or whatever. Said so, okay. So then once she has explained that, you could probably bring about saying so when you look at the the environment the hospital environment and the benefit that you get out of it uh, what do you see is probably uh, do you see that it's probably worth it what do you think right so you're helping them to logically experience a different kind of a situation okay next one we'll do one more um, okay Last week, I used the techniques we discussed on how to control my anger by taking a time out. But this morning, I completely lost it and screamed and shouted at my mother. This is just hopeless. OK, use influencing skills, either feedback or self-disclosure. 
any of the two. Feedback is you're giving them some, uh, you're giving them uh, an evaluation of what you have seen them do well positively, or a self disclosure is something about yourself and the way that you've probably dealt with a similar situation. Yeah, anybody? Come on. OK, this shouldn't be too hard. Self-disclosure shouldn't be too hard. Come on, somebody. OK, I'm, I'm going ahead because if you are not going to try, then I'm, I'm just going to say it, OK? All right, so one thing that you can bring about if you're using feedback, you can say, um, you know, it seems sometimes it seems very uh, distressing because despite the things that you have tried, you were not able to control your anger. But I want you to look at the week before when we spoke about how you were able to control your anger. Uh, um, and, and you told me of how in that situation you were able to hold yourself. I do see that you know you tried uh, immensely at that time in controlling your anger. You tried this, you tried A, you tried B, you tried C, and all of this helped you, don't you think? How, how do you think the next time you're faced with your mother what could you use? So basically, I'm giving her a feedback that the earlier time when she tried it, she she was able to do it. And you know, don't give up hope now. Uh, you know, what could you focus on? So that's on feedback. Or self-disclosure is, you know, maybe I can see what you mean because there are some times even I feel that I'm unable to hold myself. But one thing I have found helpful is to just move away from the situation when I get angry. So that's a self-disclosure. OK, so these are techniques of how you move them into a place, influencing them into moving them into action. OK, um, we'll, we'll go forward. The next, the quick one, this is a really brief one. It is how do you help to initiate action? Now, once your counselees have come to a place of getting their goals, you're helping them develop strategies for accomplishing their goals. So basically, um, let's say the earlier example we spoke about Anita, right? Anita wanting to, uh, um, you know, really spend some more time studying. That she's she felt she was multitasking and she needed to study, right? She needed to focus on one or two things to study. So the the goal is to study to focus on one thing. Now, what you're doing here is to ask them the different questions of uh, you know, what they're going to do, how they're going to do, when they're going to do, really just building up that uh, the fact of how can they get to that place of acting, of, of uh, bringing about that, uh, that action. So that's, that's what you're basically trying to help them do. So you may, you may need to like it like get them to like how you would problem solve okay this is the problem okay you need to study what are four or five ways you can think so she may say i may like to do a group study or i may like to study early in the morning or i'd like to get help from a tuition teacher or i'd like so there are three or four alternatives that she may come up with okay and once she comes up with that alternative finding what is the best strategy what is the best fit strategy? So may, she may look at, OK, maybe I will think about um, uh, well, you know, having a group study. So that's the strategy, looking at the pros and the cons of that strategy. And then once that pros and cons is decided, then formulating a certain plan and going about it. OK, so initiating action is, is very simple. The problem is you know what the goal is. The goal is she needs to study. What are 10 ways or five ways that she can study? Deciding 
uh, what, what is the positive and the negatives of each of those strategies, choosing the best one and doing it, and at the end, coming back to a time of feedback, of, of understanding how some of, the, some of this can be done. So the initiating action part of it is, is, very, uh, is something that all of us probably have done in some way or the other, right? Finding out five strategies, this, uh, deciding the pros and the cons, choosing the best strategy alongside with your counselee and getting them to do it and providing a sense of a feedback. So these are these are some of the ways that you would get them to formulate that. And then they may come back and tell you, okay, this worked, that didn't work. Find out why is what happened, what made what what why didn't it work? What were the issues that that didn't allow it to work? What is an alternate plan that you can do? So the initiating action is basically to get them to begin to resolve and finding out, uh, uh, getting them to a place of implementing implementing whatever they have decided and come up to. And at the end, you give them a, um, a feedback or an evaluation, review the entire course of action. And, and then if you know it, it gets resolved, then you come to that place where you are terminating. You're, give, you're bringing about the entire termination of it, OK? So we've gone through different skills through, um, you know, in, in uh, in counseling, we started off with attending, we went into responding, we went to questioning, influencing, and then moving into action. Now, it doesn't mean all because you finish these five. After that, after initiating action on one goal, your counselor may say, you know, there is another thing that I wanted to talk about. Since this is settled, I have something else to discuss. So then you're going back to that same route over, over again till a point of time. The counselor says, you know, I've got, I've got whatever has uh, that I needed to have uh, I've I've been able to establish it and I and you know I've been able to work through that action so these are uh, you know we've we've gone through a lot of those these counseling skills again now this is all in theory right uh, in theory they they look um, um, how, how do I put it they, they look uh, they look as if they, they they form one after another but but it's something that, that we need to practice to see how they move from one to another. And, and that's why it's so important to, to get to, into conversations with people. You know, Use these skills back to figure out where you're getting stuck. Because until and unless you're able to really go through, the, the, through, through an entire counseling session, you may not really figure out where where you where you're getting stuck. Maybe the next class, what I'd probably do when I'm in person, uh, when when I'm with the students, maybe we'll take some time, maybe around twenty minutes, to try and take a small problem and try and tease out the entire thing, and uh, you know, look into attending, looking into responding, looking into questioning, influencing, and action. We'll try and do that. It isn't very easy to do that, um, you know, in twenty minutes, but we'll try our best. So that you know there can be a little bit of a, a refreshing of how these skills go about. Okay, all right. One or two minutes. Any questions before we close? Okay, the class has been extremely quiet. I haven't even heard a whisper today. So, okay. Uh, will someone close with a word of prayer? Anybody? Jacqueline, can I request you to close with a word of prayer, please? Uh, OK. Go ahead, go ahead. Whoever had, I think it was Prince. Please go ahead, Prince. Prince, please go ahead. Uh, Mama, let uh, Jackin now. Okay, Jackin is not humbling yeah, myself. Go ahead, Jackin. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord God, that you've given us, Lord God. 
as we sit and learn lord god the counseling skills father father give us the wisdom lord give us the strength lord give us the love compassion and patience lord all that is needed oh god to invest in another person's life oh god father help us lord god to view them lord god as you see them lord god help us lord god to learn the techniques lord god and you are the one who fills us with your wisdom oh lord give each of us your wisdom lord your love father that we will learn these techniques and you use them fruitfully lord god wherever that you want us to use us oh god be it lord in our, in the circle that you've given us the influence that you've given us wherever that you take us oh god help us to be obedient and teach each of us give us the grace of oh father give us the wisdom oh lord father thank you lord that you've given so many things you've taught us so many things oh lord father we pray a blessing on each and every one of us in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you all. God bless. Meet you all next week.